Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing angle relationships. So let's start with the interior angles of a triangle. So in a triangle, we have three interior angles and they sum to 180 degrees. So we can use this relationship to find missing angles of a triangle. Let's look at this first question. It says, what is the relationship between angle X and the other two angles of the triangle? We know that they sum to 180 degrees because the three angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. So we can use that fact to find the measure of angle X. We would set up an equation, 65 plus 75 plus X equals 180. So the first thing I'm going to do is combine like terms 65 plus 75 is 140 and 140 plus X equals 180. And my last step to get X by itself is subtract 140 and 180 minus 140 is 40. So the measure of angle X is 40 degrees. Okay, let's look at number three. What is the relationship between angle X and the other two angles of the triangle? Same thing, the three angles sum to 180 degrees. So again, we can use that fact to find the missing angle X. This one right here, that's just indicating a right angle. So it's 90 degrees. So the equation would be 90 plus 40 plus X equals 180. So first thing I need to do is combine like terms. 90 plus 40 is 130 and 130 plus X equals 180. And then I would subtract 130 and I get that X equals 150 degrees or sorry, just 50 degrees. 180 minus 130 is 50. Okay, we also learned about exterior angles of triangles this year. So as you can see, angle B and angle D right here form a line. So those two angles are going to sum to 180 degrees. And I also know that B plus A plus C equals 180 degrees. So I could replace angle D with angles A and C because B plus A plus C would equal 180. So that means that D is equal to A plus C. Interior plus interior equals exterior. The sum of the remote interior angles is equal to the exterior angle. So let's look at all of those relationships a little bit more with this picture right here. The first question is asking us, what is the relationship between the interior angles of a triangle? What is the measure of angle M? So that's just what we were looking at up above. I know that the three interior angles sum to 180 degrees. So I can use that fact to write an equation to find angle M. It would be 50 plus 100 plus M equals 180. Since those are the three angles inside the triangle and I would need to combine like terms, 50 plus 100 is 150. So 150 plus M equals 180. I would subtract 150. And I get that angle M is 30 degrees. Okay, then number six says, what is the relationship between angles M and N? You can see right here, they form a line. So they are supplementary. which just means they sum to 180 degrees. And then this next question says, what is the relationship between angles N and 50 and 100? So N is the exterior angle 
and 50 and 100 are the remote interior angles. And like we talked about, the remote interior angles, 50 plus 100 would equal angle N. So that is the relationship. The 50 plus 100 would equal angle N. So the last question is, what is the me measure of angle N? It would be 150 degrees, which also makes sense because it's supplementary with angle M, which was 30, and 30 plus 150 is 180. Okay, we also looked at parallel lines cut by a transversal. So here, these would be the parallel lines, and this would be the transversal. And as you can see, we have four angles that are 102 and four angles that are 78. So the angles formed are going to be two angle measures. They're either going to be congruent or they'll be supplementary, meaning they will add to 180 degrees. So let's look at angle or number nine. It says lines P and K are parallel and intersected by line T. What is the relationship between the two angles? What is the measure of angle X? So I have 59 right here and then I have X right here. I can see those are both acute angles. Those are less than 90 degrees and they're corresponding. They're in the same little corner of those angle pairs. So they're corresponding, which means they are congruent. So that means angle X is also 59 degrees. They are corresponding. Which means they are congruent. Which means the same angle measure. So that means that X is also 59 degrees. Okay, then let's look at number 10. It says, what is the relationship between the two angles? What is the measure of angle X? So this time I can see that 100 is an obtuse angle and this angle where X is is an acute angle. So I know they're gonna be different and that means that they're supplementary because the angles and parallel lines cut by a transversal are either congruent or supplementary. I also know they're supplementary because they form a line. So they form a line or a linear pair, which means they are supplementary. Which means they sum to 180 degrees. So I could set up an equation to find angle X this time. I would do 100 plus x equals 180, and all I would have to do to find x is subtract 100, and 180 minus 100 is 80. So that angle is 80. Okay, the last angle relationship we looked at was with similar figures. They have the same shape but different sizes, like these two here. Their angles are congruent and their side lengths are proportional. So since their side lengths are proportional, we can set up proportions. It's just important that your proportions are corresponding and consistent. So I'm gonna label this as my original figure and this is my new figure. So your ratios need to be consistent about what is in each part of the proportion. So let's take a look at that. On A, I have the side length of 4 and 5.6, which those are both corresponding. So I did the original one over the new one here. And then in the other one, I start with the new one and then I did the original one because X is right here and then 5 is right here. It went from new to old. So that is not consistent. So A is not going to be my answer here. Okay, let's look at the next one. I have four over five. So from the same figure, the shorter side over the longer side equals, this time they did the longer side over the shorter side. So that is not consistent. That's not gonna work. They did X over 56, which was not consistent with the first one. Okay, let's look at C. I have 5.6, so the longer side of the new one, over four 
or sorry, shorter side of the new one over four, which is the shorter side of the original one. So they did new over original, and then they did X over five, which was new over original, and those were both corresponding. So C is my answer here. Um, let's make sure this last one wouldn't work. 5.6 over X equals five over four. They were not consistent with the corresponding parts there, so that's not gonna work. Okay, let's look at number 12. Figure one and two are similar. Which of the following proportions must be true? So they drew some angle measure markings to help us recognize the corresponding sides. Let's look at this first one. EF does correspond to JK and they did original over new. And then with the second one, they did LM, so they started with new over GH, which those are corresponding, but they didn't keep the order consistent because they did new over original, so that doesn't work. Okay, let's look at B. They did EF over JK, so corresponding parts again, and they did original over new. And then the second ratio is GH, so original over new. So it looks like B is the one that works there. Let's make sure that C and D do not work. So C is F to G over E to H. So two sides from the original one equals JM over KL. So they didn't keep what sides they were using in their proportion consistent there. So that one's not gonna work. And then the last one is EF, my original figure over LM, a new one, which those aren't even corresponding, and then JK and GH aren't corresponding either. So that doesn't work. So 12, the answer is B.